Hi guys, this is Stanley again. Welcome back. This is part two of our three part video series talking about uh, three stocks that I, I might actually own until the day I die. Right, firstly, I just want to thank all of you for filling up our survey form, which I sent out uh, a week ago. I think now we have roughly about 300 entries, which is extremely great. And also those who have a question and ask question on our first video, I just want to thank all of you. Um, before I begin, I just want to share a little bit of story, you know. Um, when I first started investing, when I first started learning about value investing, I am almost like an evangelist, you know, um, always focusing on valuation and buying low, selling high, this kind of concept. And I place a lot of emphasis on that. And, and every stock that I buy, I want to hunt for the cheapest stock out there and I'll sell them once they reach my target price. So I'm constantly looking for undervalued stock and then once they reach my target price, I'll sell that. And I do that for almost the first uh, few years of, of my uh, starting out in investing. But I, I slowly realized that I'm putting in a lot of work uh, because you know after I sell a, a stock I have to con look for a new stock to buy and uh, just co repeat the process and I realized that uh, I'm making decent return but but it's nowhere near that uh, the, the the target that I'm, I'm really setting out to do and I, I when I look back on my portfolio I realized that some of my best return is actually coming from stocks that I I buy and uh, I, I, I sort of forgot about them and, and uh, I just hold them uh, for, for a few years. And that's, those are the stocks that I realized have uh, the, the, a huge gain in my portfolio. So I started to you know, change my approach in investing. I started to not learn from you know, professional fund manager per se on how they, how they treat stocks or invest, but rather I, I go in to study how billionaire grow their wealth. I, I look at people like Warren Buffett, you know, Bill Gates, uh, Li Ka-shing or Robert Koch, um, all these famous uh, billionaires. I studied how they actually are able to build up their, uh, their wealth uh, over time. And I realized one key difference between them and say professional fund managers. Billionaire really see stocks as just a store of their wealth. They, they don't see stocks as an investment instrument uh, but rather it's just a storage for them to keep their wealth so they would invest or they, they start a company and they list it but they will they will keep the company for, for a very very long time you know, it's, you know Warren Buffett said that he will never sell Berkshire Hathaway and uh, no matter the market is up or down even uh, during 2008 crisis or, or any crisis per se in the past they still hold on to it and uh, it goes to show, you know, a lot of their stocks that they own, you know, Microsoft, um, Berkshire Hathaway, or even uh, Cheng Kong Holdings for Li ka -shing or um, Kerry Holdings for, for Robert Koch, all these stocks have done very well if you have hold them for a very, very long time, um, meaning more than 10, 20 years. Um, and that's, that's a key point that I realized. And that's because stocks will always be a better storage of wealth than cash. When we say, oh, I don't want to invest in the stock market because it's too risky, uh, what are we doing with our, our money? We are mostly keeping it in cash. Uh, but uh, as it turns out, uh, by starting all this billionaire, cash is actually the most dangerous uh, instrument that you can keep your wealth in because cash, uh, more close to 100% of the time, it will depreciate over time. Whereas stocks, good stocks, if you buy and hold them for the long term, they will appreciate for the long term. And, and that revelation really changed my investment style. And I, I started to really look into great companies and companies that I can buy and invest for a long term. And it, it, it not only improved my investment return, it also reduced my workload because now I don't have to look for companies and then watch and monitor it till it uh, reaches target price and sell and repeat the whole process again. I buy a great company, I monitor it, and but I, I, I don't sell it. I just reinvest its dividend over and over and over again. And uh, that has really helped me grow my portfolio to, to now uh, a, a meaningful sum for my family over the past 12 years. And, and, as, and I realized this kind of investment style is not actively advocated in the finance industry. 
And that's what we are trying to do to change here by starting our exclusive VIA club where we want to share more about this type of strategy that I have used um, that have worked wonders for me and but it's not actively advocated in the finance industry. And I, I want to share my entire personal portfolio with you, which I will update it uh, on a monthly basis where you can see and comment on it on what stock I'm buying and what stock I'm holding, what stock I'm selling, and what's my opinion on some of the stocks within my portfolio. I love to have that conversation with you. Um, but let's dive right in into the main topic for, for today, which is talking about the second stock that I want to own uh, possibly for the rest of my life, right? And hopefully that, that that's, that's going to be a long time uh, away. Yes, yesterday we talked about the stock Jardin Saika and Carriage, uh, which is listed in Singapore. Today let's talk about a stock that I really like on Busan Malaysia. Uh, I think many of you might uh, already know this stock is actually Heineken Malaysia, right? Heineken Malaysia is sort of the listed subsidiary of Heineken uh, Envy, the the parent company uh, in Holland and they are listed here in uh, Busa Malaysia with a market capitalization of roughly 6.9 billion ringgit right now. It's uh, It has always been a dividend counter giving you roughly a, a yield uh, over its history about 4 to 6 percent depending on when you, bu you bought them and now it's trading uh, roughly about 25 times its, uh, its price to earnings. Um, I, I really like this company because it has shown extremely uh, stable and, and, and consistency earnings and, and revenue over the you know its history maybe close to 50 years uh, and it has reached a point where I, I kind of see it as just a money printing machine Heineken is now the one of the only two licensed brewery in Malaysia the other one being Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia which which I own as well um, but Heineken it has a long history. It started out as actually Guinness Anchor Berhad um, back in 1964, and uh, its parent company it's is actually a joint venture between uh, I think uh, APB, the Asia Pacific Brewery, and also Guinness. Um, but it, this company has been taken over by by Heineken, and uh, I think back in 2015. Uh, and they have renamed the whole company to the Heineken Malaysia Berhad. Uh, it still produces the same um, range of beers, um, mostly the most po uh, popular beers in Malaysia like uh, Tiger, Guinness, Heineken, Anchor. Uh, these are brands all produced by Heineken Malaysia. And, and what I really like is Heineken Malaysia has shown a long track record of very, very stable growth. Its earnings actually growing at about 6.3% 6 roughly annually for the past 26-27 um, years. And, and, and uh, revenue and earnings is extremely stable given that consumer staples um, you know, is, is a very sta a stable kind of business and alcoholic beers and, and beverages is definitely considered as a consumer staples. A fun fact that even during the global financial crisis, its earning per share actually grew. Uh, earning per share grew back in 2000, uh, 2007 at just 37 cents per share and it actually grew to 47 cents per share when it reached 2009, right? Um, and the company has a very simple to understand business model. It's just uh, manufacture and distribute, distribute beers, their scalp, their cider throughout Malaysia. The technology is not sophisticated. Their factory has been running well, and uh, you know there's only minimum maintenance capex year on year. So it is really making very good uh, free cash flow, uh, constantly printing money, uh, which is why it explained the company is able to sustain such a high dividend rate, right? And its dividend is actually been growing as its earning grow. When you look at the market, you know the market is still growing. Malaysia as a whole has a very young population, uh, albeit when you look at it, uh, although a majority of the population is uh, restricted or on drinking alcoholic beverages, but there's still a large, uh, large portion of the population that 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 does consume uh, the beverages, and also Malaysia is a very very popular 
tourism destination and that's that's very key which which sort of a lot of people uh, uh didn't didn't realize and 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 as tourism increase and as the population in, uh, increase and grow um i'm sure the market is going to be much bigger than what it is now Heineken Malaysia over the past 20 30 years you know they have been um, maintaining their operating margin very consistently roughly 10 to 15 percent and it's kind of show that they are able to pass on the cost any cost increase to the consumer well, I just give you an example back in say 2016 when when the government uh, increased the tax duty and excess for alcoholic products uh, Heineken Malaysia together with Carlsberg uh, Brewery is able to raise prices on the exact same day when the duty start so it, it should really show their strong pricing power in the in the market whichever cost that comes on to them they are very likely able to pass them in on to the consumer and, and second point that I'm optimistic about the company is really when you look at the parent company Heineken Group um, Heineken Group has a portfolio of, of, of products uh, like maybe a few hundreds of them uh, within its brand but when you look at Heineken Malaysia more or less it's just distributing about you know a dozen brands right now and it really shows as the market matures you know Heineken Malaysia can definitely uh, latch on to the portfolio that the parents has and introduce more and more new products into the market as as the consumer taste might change in the future so Heineken Malaysia definitely company if everything goes to plan it is certainly a, a stock that I might just uh, hold and pass it on to my to my kids you know uh, I'll tell them rather than drink Heineken you know own the stock <laughs> and right now it's trading roughly 25 times and giving you a 4% dividend yield I have to say when when I first started investing in it it was trading roughly about 15 times it's earning and I, I invested in it when it's giving me a, a dividend yield about 5.5% uh, back back then um over, over the past decade i i, I track its p roughly range between 11 times to about 30 times um so so uh, let's give you a rough idea you know when when could be a good point for you if if this is a stock that you like um but for me you know i have no plans to sell it and I, i'm just gonna reinvest the dividends as, as they come and uh uh, it's really a stock that uh, I don't mind holding, right? Uh, that's that's my number two stock for for today. You know, tomorrow I'm gonna share with you uh, one last stock that I think that I might hold for forever, and this is a global company that is um, you know in every corner of the world and is is in one of the fastest growing industry um, right now. And I do still see that there is a huge potential for this company to grow even bigger uh, and go into so much more uh, fields in the future, right? Before I go, I just want to maybe catch up with a few of you uh, during the survey that uh, you have asked a lot of questions and some of it I, I really like and I re really want to share them with you now and maybe talk a little bit about it. And uh, when we talk about our VIA club, which uh, we are, we are de designing right now, um, one once one key issue that a lot of you share with me, uh, including for this one, is actually shared by Mr. Lee. He said that you know in investing, uh, he really lacks the the I guess time and resources to look into a pool of stocks. You know on how to manage his stock portfolio constantly, especially if all of us are working. Um, and it's really a key point that VIA Club is trying to to solve. You know, uh, instead of doing all the work yourself, uh, we want to have a, a community. Uh, first of all, of course, you can share and learn from my portfolio and my analysis, which I'll update every every week. Um, but on top of that, we have a we will want to build a community where, when you think about it, it, it allows you to share ideas among everyone. Uh, if if one person is going to come up with just two good stocks per year think of it if you have 10 friends uh, that's roughly about 20 stocks that are good stocks that that you will come across in a year's time and VIA club is really trying uh, that we want to create this environment for all of you where it's a safe place for you to share and uh, you know not worry so much uh, that you'll make a mistake we're here to to learn together 
Well, and another key point that I think is pointed out by by uh, by Max is that he he really want to learn the principle of investing and and how to research on equity. Uh, that's that's I think a lot of concern and uh, issue with uh, many of us, but. Learning is actually a lifelong process. Learning about investing is a lifelong process. Um, there's, there are indeed many investment calls out there. I actually went to a few and I have to say some of them, uh, not all of them, but some of them are, are indeed pr very good. And uh, But we cannot assume that just because we went to uh, some investment class, uh, we'll come up being an expert in investing. Uh, in fact, most of them, they, they, they sort of teach you the, the the fundamental and basics about investing but uh, other things that you really have to pick up uh, by yourself or through experience or talking to friends and and, and learning uh, over time this is because in investing businesses are always changing technology is always changing right and, and even human psychology when we talk about the market human psychology uh, we learn more and more about human psychology every year and as all these things uh, improve and, and we get more knowledge of it um, it, it, it gives us more and more things to learn about and to upgrade ourselves to suit uh, the, the, the future and 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 the, then the stock market so I really hope to share this journey with you that we can you know share with new things that we have learned my team has learned um, on our weekly update and definitely through our community you'll be able to chat not just with the team but uh, within one one another within the community to learn from uh, each of our mistake or things that we have learned you know uh, I always believe that you know you have to learn from other bis other people mistake because life is too short to make all of them yourself right uh, so that's all from us today uh, for our last video tomorrow do check that out it's going to be a great company that I think will continue to grow for many many years to come and it's definitely one of the I think the most exciting businesses out there right now right if you have any comments for uh, Heineken Malaysia or VIA Club uh, feel free to comment it down below or if you if you like the video and you think it's useful for someone else well, I really hope that you'll share it with your friends I thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.